Hi y'all, this is Mrs. D, and today we're going to be doing a lesson over equivalent fractions. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to know when we're finding equivalent fractions is that fractions are equivalent when the numerator and denominator are equal in simplest form or reduced. So just to give you an example here, I have 3 fourths equals 6 eighths. Well, I know that 3 goes into 6 by multiplying times 2, and 4 goes into 8 by also multiplying times 2. So since they can be reduced, 6 eighths can be reduced to 3 fourths, then these two are equivalent fractions because I can reduce them to its simplest form. Another example is 1 half equals 4 eighths. And I know that 1 half, 1 times 4, 4 equals 4 and 2 times 4 equals 8. So 1 half and 4 eighths are also equal. If you think of 1 half, that one's a really easy one to see if they're equivalent or not. If your numerator is half of your denominator, then it's going to reduce to 1 half. So other examples of this might be 5 over 10 or 10 over 20 or 50 over 100 or 100 over 200. So anytime your numerator is half of the denominator, then your answer can reduce to 1 half. Right. For step two, when we're reducing fractions, you have to divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Now reducing fractions is how we're gonna get them to their simplest form, so let's look at a couple of examples. So here I have 12 over 15, and I wanna reduce it. The easiest thing to start with is to look at your numerator and see if it goes into the denominator equally. 12 does not go into 15 equally, so I know that can't be a factor. So let's look at our other factors of 12. Well, I know 1 times 12 is 12. I know 2 times 6 is 12. I know 3 times 4 is 12, and that's the only factors I know. And of those factors, the only number that also goes into 15 is 3. So that means that I'm going to divide the numerator by 3 and the denominator by 3. I have to reduce them by dividing by the same number. So 12 divided by 3 and 15 divided by 3 is going to give me the answer of 4 fifths. Let's look at another example. Here we have 12 over 24. Well, this time I can look again and see, does my numerator go into my denominator? And in this case, 12 goes into 24 two times. So I know since 12 goes into 24 equally, I can divide the top and the bottom by 12. And 12 divided by 12 is one, 24 divided by 12 is two, so this one reduces to one half. So 4 fifths is the simplest form of 12 fifteenths, which means these are equivalent fractions because I was able to reduce the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And the same fact on the bottom, 12 over 24, is equivalent to 1 half. For the third step when we're finding equivalent fractions, we want to make sure the numerator and the denominator increase or decrease equally using multiply and divide. So far we've gone over what happens when we reduce a fraction, which means we're going to divide the top and the bottom by the same thing. But if I'm looking for equivalent fractions, I can also go the other direction and multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. So let's look here at example one. So we want to know, is 5 ninths equal to 25 over 45? Well, the first thing we want to do is look at our numerator and see how many times does 5 go into 25? And in this case, 5 goes into 25 by multiplying times 5. And then on the bottom, I would have to multiply the same thing. So is 9 times 5 45? And the answer is yes. So in fact, these are equivalent fractions because 5 ninths multiplied by 5 over 5 equals 25 over 45. Another example is 12 over 32. Does that equal 3 eighths? This time we're going to be reducing again, so we're getting smaller, which means we're going to divide. Well, 12 divided by 4 equals 3. So for the denominator, if I divide 32 by 4, I also get 8. So this one is also 
equivalent. So it doesn't matter if you're going to multiply or divide as long as you're multiplying and dividing the top and the bottom number by the same number. So now that we've gone over the different rules or steps to finding equivalent fractions, let's practice a little bit. So here we're going to reduce 16 over 20. So the first thing we ask is, does the numerator go into the denominator equally? And in this case, no, 16 does not go into 20. So now we need to find our factors of 16. Well, I know I have 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4, and those are the only factors of 16. So of those factors, we want to know which ones also go into 20. And in this case, 2 and 4 both go into 20. Well, since we're trying to reduce it to its simplest form, we're going to divide by the biggest factor. And in this case, that's 4. So if I divide 16 by 4, I get 4 on top. And then 20 divided by 4 gives me 5 in the denominator. So 16 over 20 reduces to 4 fifths. For example, 2. Now we want to know, are these two fractions equivalent? So in this case, we have to see, does the numerator and the denominator multiply by the same number to get the new fraction? So 3 goes into 12 four times. So in this case, we're multiplying by 4. 4 times 4 on the bottom equals 16. So yes, these are equivalent. For the last example, we want to know, is 4 sevenths equivalent to 12 twentieths? Same process as the question before. We're going to multiply 4 times 3 to get 12. On the bottom, we want to multiply 7 times 3. 7 times 3 equals 21, which is not equal to 20. So in this case, no, these are not equivalent fractions. So let's recap our steps here. First, when we're finding equivalent fractions, fractions are equivalent when the numerator and the denominator are equal when they're in simplest form or reduced. Second, when reducing fractions, you have to divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. And third, you can also make sure that the numerator and denominator increase or decrease equally by using multiply and divide. So if you're reducing fractions, you have to divide the top and the bottom by the same number. You want it to get to its simplest form, which is the smallest you can go. But if you're looking for just equivalent fractions in general, they can be increased or decreased by multiplying and dividing by the same number for the numerator and the denominator. Well, if you still need more help, go ahead and watch this video a couple of times and then be ready to ask some specific questions. But I hope this helped you understand how to find equivalent fractions. This is Mrs. D signing off. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.